Our first port of call was the crossing that everyone here calls the main Mara crossing. We've come to know it as the Gormless Crocodile Crossing, and this name turned out to be completely appropriate today. When we got there, there were wildebeest and zebra massing at the water's edge. The wildebeest had a drink, the zebra had a bit of a fight, but they wanted to cross. Then, a 15-foot Gormless Crocodile hove into view and lifted his whole head out of the water. The zebra and the wildebeest skedaddled off to the north towards another crossing point. Well, if you want to chase your supper away, that's the best way to do it, isn't it? We moved on to the next crossing, where there was already a huge herd of wildebeest swimming across the river. Thousands upon thousands of them were streaming out of the north, diving into the deep water and coming out. There were no crocs in sight, and I think that's obviously why they chose that particular place. Here's a lion! There's a lion right next to us! But as they were coming out, Quite suddenly, a lion appeared from the left, and she moved into the stream of the herd as they came out of the water. Look at this. This is unbelievable. I don't even know what to say, everyone. Look, look, look. She had a go at one of the cows, which butted her away, and then she kind of seemed to be confused by the amount of choice she had. Eventually, however, she snuck behind a termite mound, and as the very last wildebeest came out of the water, she grabbed it and pinned it against the termite mound. She grabbed him by the throat and throttled him until he went quiet. She's got it. She's got it by the throat. People, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. From there, we moved off to another crossing point where we hoped to find another thousand wildebeest. Instead, there was one, and he was staring down a great group of crocodiles who seemed to be taking as much interest in him as he was in them. It was quite a comical scene. We don't really understand what was going on, but from there, we moved back to the main crossing. And everybody, here we are. We're watching the migration story unfold. The wildebeest and zebra are streaming into the water. There is a giant crocodile about to have a go at them. There he is. One of them's been caught. One of them's been caught by a croc. He's been caught. Look at him. He's being dragged under. There he goes. Oh, shame. He's got no chance. Goodness gracious. He's bellowing. Oh, the poor fellow. Everybody, this is the tragedy. Oh, this is the great tragedy, you see, of the migration. And this is the story that we came to tell. That one's down. That is unbelievable. That's completely gone. Straight down. There was a small herd of about 40 Thompson's gazelles. Now we know that they are part of the Great Migration. They move with the wildebeest and the zebra and the eland and they too have to cross the rivers. One jumped in and swam across unscathed, and then the rest followed. And almost as soon as the rest of the herd jumped into the water, a great flurry of reptilian activity took place. Those crocodiles sped into the water like little speedboats. And the Thompson's gazelles that were targeted had absolutely no chance. As the crocs caught up with them, they rose out of the water and whap! They slammed their jaws down on them and dragged them underwater. It was one strike and the Thompson's gazelles were gone. From the incredible excitement of the Thompson's crossing, we headed across to see how the Kichwa Tembo pride were getting on. Turned out they did very well without us around them. They had killed twice during the day. They were satiated completely, so we left them. And in the darkness, we found two male lions. One, Morena, turns out a brother of Scarface. The other, one of the blondies who's usurped the territory. They were lying sleepily in the long grass. It looked like a perfectly comfortable place to lie, and it was the perfectly restful ending to what was probably the most exciting and magnificent wildlife day that I've ever experienced here.